thank you, Proven. Uh, I think there's a benefit um, to mount a collective response um, from uh, pressure groups, from um, not-for-profit organizations um, doing wonderful work, such as yours, um, from the perspective of uh, professional bodies like the CBA, um, we can and the CBA has internal mechanisms for doing that legislative advocacy, communicating with um, government officials regarding um, potential legislative amendments. And uh, thankfully, um, the Premier has indicated some interest in amending the human rights uh, legislation, although for some other reason. So perhaps if uh, she's going to open up the legislation anyways for amendment, you know, why not try? to say, okay, um, it looks like we never needed this particular amendment. Why don't you just remove it at the same time and um, let the status quo, um, let it be what it used to be prior to December 8, 2021. So I think that we can, um, there's great value in uh, collective um, advocacy. And uh, more so elections are coming up next year. So it seems to me that politicians will listen. Group. I think that all of us as legal professionals, we have to then raise our concerns like Nam and, and Bob have said in terms of how we think that this is, um, you know, the, like, for example, like to Vaughn's point, I mean, if, if it's not going to be used that that clause to say that there's no reasonable prospect of success and therefore we're going to, um, you know, dismiss this case or, or take it out of the complaint process. If it's not being used, then maybe we just ensure that the public is aware of that, right? And then we, we as pro legal professionals, make sure that those policies or those bulletins or whatever is being put out uh, are followed and adhered to. And um, we share um, our concerns with that level of, of uh, evidentiary burden on the complainants where there really shouldn't be a burden on a complainant. I just think that the education and engagement that that we, um, when I was there, the education and engagement that all of us were doing from from the uh, the human rights officers to the the legal counsel to the director to the chief, there was a lot of engagement with the public. Um, there 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 were certain changes due to you know the different approaches. Uh, we just need to be very concerned about making sure that the the people that that need us and to 100% to Bob's point, we are the only game in town, which that means that we, we have to take that responsibility very seriously. We have to ultimately, we have to then assess whether or not we're making a difference in terms of the larger systemic issues and the individual issues. But ultimately, with respect to these changes, which uh, I think have to look at the fact that maybe we need to be more efficient, but if we're more efficient, maybe we can take bolder stands on 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 trying to highlight areas that of societal concern that we need to we need to really focus on, and we need to say, hey, look, we're not going to spend five years on gender discrimination cases. We're gonna we're gonna streamline it, and we're gonna get it to an adjudicator, and we're gonna put a lot of resources. And we're going to share those resources with with other advocacy groups so that they can come and give us a, a better understanding of what's happening in any one particular area because they're the ones dealing with it on a day to day basis, and and they they can they can inform not only us but but the the tribunal as to what's going on and and solutions again solutions aren't just money. Solutions are about recognizing that there's a human rights violation and that we, we are, we're taking it very seriously and then being able to enforce it. I didn't really talk about there is an enforcement clause in the amendment. So that, that to me is, uh, or some changes to the enforcement. So I think that's a really good step too, that we can use our resources to enforce a judgment uh, or enforce an order of the tribunal. Is that uh, there was a time when the Human Rights Commission had a fund that they could make grants to community organizations for various 
uh, human rights projects. And, you know, there, uh, it, it was a fairly vigorous test uh, before organizations got, got funding, but they did a lot. Uh, those organizations, those community organizations had a reach that the commission couldn't possibly have. And I think we need to, to, to bring back that, that, that fund because I, I think it was uh, money well spent and, uh, and it can be again. And, uh, uh, losing that uh, really detracted from the impact of the commission's work.